Have you ever wondered if we really need to pamper the sourdough process quite as much as we're led to believe? For instance, do we even need to keep a starter or a levan? Do we need to be babying it with like multiple feedings between baking? Well, I haven't fed my starter or created a levan in over 30 days. Instead, I've been cutting off a piece of dough and then saving it for the next day's bake. It's been a great experiment in seeing just how much I can simplify the process. And here's a heads up, if you're gonna try this, there is one trick that's gonna help you avoid failure. Now, in this bowl, I'm blending together 420 grams of strong white bread flour and 54 grams of home milled whole wheat flour. And then in this bowl, I'm dissolving seven grams of salt into 360 grams of water. Now for this specific process, I've reduced the salt content from 2% to 1.3 because the dough that I saved from the previous day already has salt in it. Now, after I've added the flour to the salted water, I'm gonna add the dough I saved from yesterday's bake. Every last bit goes into the bowl, and then we're gonna bring this together using a spoon, and then once it becomes stiff, I'm gonna pinch that dough together until it's well mixed. Now, as normal, we don't need to worry about creating a smooth dough just yet. I'm gonna leave this to sit for 30 minutes, but before I do that, I'm gonna add a little jam jar lid to the top. Now, if you try this method, take my warning and don't forget to do this. The entire process was carried out at 25 degrees Celsius, all the way from the start through to the finish. Now, after half an hour's rest, we can turn our dough out onto the bench. And now I'm gonna knead it extremely well. I wanna make sure that yesterday's dough is really well distributed throughout the mix. I do not care about building strength. Time is gonna take care of that. The sole purpose is to mix this dough properly. And then once I'm happy, the dough can get balled up and go back into the bowl. And then after covering, make sure to replace that jam jar lid. This is gonna sit out again at room temperature for one hour. Right, so now it's time to laminate our dough. And I'm removing that jam jar lid, but I'm keeping it somewhere where I won't miss it. And after flipping the dough out, onto my bench. I'm gonna do one of my regular laminations, but you can just as easily stretch the dough in the bowl. I ease that dough out into a large rectangle, and then as soon as the dough resists, I just move on to another spot. I pull it out nice and thin before folding it up into a rectangle. But before we ball this dough up, I'm gonna cut off 125 grams of dough. Now, don't fall into the trap of removing this piece of dough too early. After the first lamination is the perfect time. This is the trick to the entire process. You need to make sure that the old dough has been mixed through the new dough thoroughly and has had enough time to start fermenting again. If you remove this dough too early, you're gonna have hit and miss results. So make sure to wait until after you've laminated the dough. Right, so this main dough is gonna be left to bulk ferment at room temperature, and I'm gonna pop this offshoot dough into the fridge. And we can say bon voyage to our jam jar lid as it served its purpose well. And if you haven't figured out what that was for, I will let you know a little bit later. Right, our dough has been fermenting for six hours and it looks like it's about doubled in volume. Now, I haven't touched the dough for about four and a half hours, so I'm gonna give it a quick pre-shape to tighten the dough up and that's gonna make it a little bit easier to shape properly. Now, you can do this any way you like, but I try not to degas the dough too much. I apply just enough pressure to create some tension in the dough and then I leave it to rest for 20 minutes on the bench uncovered. After the rest, I flip the dough over and I fold the top over the middle and then the bottom over the top of that. Then after rotating the dough, I even it out by pushing gently with my fingers. And then it's simply a case of rolling the dough up. And when I get to the end, I seal the edge of the dough. Then I flip it over so the seam is facing up. I gently tuck in the ends and pinch them closed. And that is about that. Now the dough gets a bath in rice flour and it goes into the basket, seam side up to prove. But here's a tip. Try to keep this process as clean as possible. You do not need to be throwing flour everywhere. It's just gonna make it harder to shape and harder to clear up. Use just enough flour to stop the dough from sticking to the bench, but not so much that it won't stick to itself. Right, so our piece of dough has proved at room temperature for about an hour. Now, because I pushed that bulk fermentation a little bit further than I normally would, I've reduced the amount of time it's proved. Now, I'm gonna pop it into the fridge covered so it can sit happily until I'm ready to bake it tomorrow. 
Now, next to that basket, you can see the little piece of dough that we removed earlier. That's gonna stay in the fridge until 11 o'clock tonight. Then I'll remove it and leave it to ferment overnight at room temperature. That way, it'll be ready to mix into my dough tomorrow. Now, this dough is properly puffy. It's probably a touched over proof, so I need to be super, super careful with this. I definitely wanna make sure I use enough flour at this point because I don't want this jiggly piece of dough sticking to my bread peel. And then after a quick score, it's gonna get slid onto a baking stone that's been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius. It's gonna bake for 20 minutes covered with a pot and then 25 minutes uncovered. Now, if you're signed up for my community sourdough email, then you will have received this very formula in your inbox to try out at home. And if you aren't signed up, then what are you waiting for? Click that link in the video description and you'll get access to my sourdough calculator at the same time. Now, I've been baking sourdough daily for the last month using this very process, and I love it. It gets rid of an entire step, no maintaining a starter or creating a leaven. I love this process, its simplicity at its best. And just in case you are wondering what that jam jar lid was for, it was so I don't forget to remove the dough after laminating, and yes, that's a real thing. Trust me, leave yourself a visual reminder. You will thank me later. Expand your repertoire, give this method a whirl. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.